Hey there fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. Today I want to talk about a microphone that actually goes on two separate recorders. It's part of the Zoom line, I'm sure that comes as no surprise to you, and it's a shotgun microphone. And I want to show you how I use it pretty much every day, but more importantly, how it's supposed to be used. So before we move on with this little video, well, let me show you first off the recorders that we're going to be using on this. This is the Zoom H6. This thing is absolutely stunning. It's got four XLR inputs that can also be quarter jack inputts. You can plug in, uh, you can plug in pretty much anything into this thing. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I think it's about a $400 value. Comes with several different mic modules, not including the shotgun mic module that we have now that we're going to talk about today. And then I got a little kind of foot stand on it that I just bought separately that's used for cameras. And then we got this. This is the Zoom F1 recorder. This is made to have a lapel, kind of like what I have here. Uh, but so you can record uh, remotely off of your camera uh, directly onto this. So this is great for folks who might have a camera that don't have uh, a way to plug in an external audio source. So having one of these is really, really great because then you can take this and the audio from your camera that doesn't have a way to plug in a microphone um, and you can simply match up the audios and there you go, you get a clean signal uh, off of this, which is really, really sweet. Now, the microphone that we're going to be talking about today is this guy. This is the SSH-6. Now, let me go ahead and take off this um, big foamy here, and you're going to see that this is a very, very long microphone. Now, this is what they call a super, uh, super cardioid microphone. And I, if I'm correct, it's super cardioid. Uh, I'll have to double check that. I swear, whoever came up with the name super cardioid was definitely smoking something they shouldn't have been. On the Zoom website, they actually say the SSH-6 is a mid-side stereo shotgun capsule that includes a super directional microphone for picking up sound. Uh, in my opinion, that's called a super cardioid. Basically, it's a very, very thin feed that comes out from the microphone. So the amount of sensitivity comes mainly off of the tip of this thing, like a shotgun. And yes, it will pick, uh, pick up side audios, but not nearly in the same way that it's going to pick it up from the front. Now also there is a feature that you can turn on with this that has two more microphones here. These are mid-side microphones and if you turn those on then this part becomes sensitive and you can be able to hear uh, in stereo from these parts as well as that. Um, it's a really nifty microphone. The main reason I bought it was for that super cardioid effect which basically means that whatever is to the sides of it it's going to knock out a lot of those sounds. Behind me here right now, I am running two 3D printers at the same time. They are letting off quite a bit of noise. You can probably hear that on this microphone right now, which is a stereo microphone hooked onto my side with a wireless pack that's hooked up to a little recorder system I have here that's going directly into the computer. You're hearing that. What we're going to do is we're going to utilize this around those 3D printers and try a couple tests. Now, in saying that, let me explain some of the myths that people have about these, these shotgun microphones. People think that the shotgun microphone is supposed to have a reach, that it's supposed to be able to hear so much better really far away, that you can point this someone like, at someone like a shotgun who's way far away and get just their audio. Technically, to a certain extent, that's partially true, but it really isn't, because no matter what, you're not going to get super crazy audio all the way in the distance without some crazy kind of spy gear. But what this does do very, very well is it really singles out what you're pointing it at. But it's supposed to single out what you're pointing it at only a few feet away from it, not forever away from it. So we're going to do some tests here and I'll show you what I mean. Um, th this comes with a really cool furry, what we call a dead cat in the industry. There might be some other terms, but dead cat is the one that I know. And you can pull this on here. and This is super awesome for wind muffing. So if you take this outside and you're doing some kind of report or something like that, the wind gets all caught up in all this hair and it just won't go into the microphone. It, you might get some wind noise, but it won't crack the microphone. You won't hear that crackling and zuzzing that you hear on so many home movies. And it also has two little uh, rubber bands here that strap onto the buttons on the sides to hold it into place. Now I don't much like that they hold onto those buttons because I don't want to damage the buttons, but 
technically that is holding very sturdy onto there. Now, what I did though, is I went on to B&H um, because I didn't have it on Amazon and I bought this. This is simply a wind muff because I use this microphone for broadcasting. I, yes, I do have quite a few different options when it comes to microphones all over the place here for broadcasting purposes. But if I wanted to do something like, as I've done, broadcast from my kitchen, literally I've done radio broadcasts from my kitchen just to go and enjoy seeing the sun and having the ability to kind of go anywhere with this thing. I could literally make a whole radio broadcast with just this, literally. Uh, so let's go ahead here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this module in. So this is the SSH6, like I said. We simply plug it in to this right there and it'll immediately activate uh, the system and tell it which microphone is hooked up to it. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. And as it powers up here, I already have a little uh, SD card in there and we can immediately start recording. So let's just go ahead and start with just the general, okay, I have this hooked up to my camera. Let's hear how this sounds kind of thing. Now, obviously I have the level set and, and this is the only problem with the H6 is you cannot see the levels if you're doing this kind of a deal, this is this H6 is meant for someone who's a, who's doing production, not for someone who's trying to vlog. So let me make sure that my left and right channel is turned on. The mids is, and I, I have the mids turned off on here, so it's not going to be reading external sounds to the side. It's mainly going to be reading specifically coming directly off the front, and I can change that by simply scrolling up and down, and it shows how much I am adding or subtracting from the the microphone on the mid side you can you can change the sensitivity which is really cool um, and you can do that through many of the different devices i'm going to go ahead and hit record and recording we're recording here so let's go ahead and do a little snap and make sure that that's reading so we can sync it up and, and then i'm just going to hold this at arm's length right now and i'm going to turn my audio up just a tick all right, that's to four, and I want to see about how bad that level is. I'm looking at the screen, which you guys are seeing, so that I can kind of get my level right. 4.5, check one, two, test one, two, check one, two. As long as you're above negative 12, usually you're pretty safe. So right here basically is roughly what people would utilize this microphone properly for, this kind of a distance. And basically, the goal is to put it up and out of the shot of wherever you are pointed at you, and that is truly what this is supposed to do. It is supposed to read from a read from a, something further. Usually if I'm using this microphone here, I'm usually trying to be right up on this mic as much as humanly possible, like right up on it. Um, within within usually the rule is within a hand breadth here, kind of like that. That's usually the rule of thumb of where you want to be with a microphone. Now, with this one right now, I'm holding it at arm's length, which is about double that length, roughly. Uh, and, and I think it could go, probably go out a bit further. But remember, the further away you go, and the more that you have to turn up that audio, the more background noise it's going to pick up. Now, if I stop talking and I point this at the printers... I'm assuming you can hear those printers pretty well. Now here's where this is gonna do something interesting. If I take the microphone and I bring it nice and close to my voice, and I'm hoping I'm not clipping there, it doesn't look like it, and I start to rotate the microphone to the side, that level won't drop off much, but it will drop off a bit. So right now what this microphone is picking up as I'm recording from the side is it's picking up reverberations off of other parts of the room. And what, what little bit of what we would call noise or, or dirt that's coming into the front of the microphone through my voice just being this close to it. If we hold it a bit further away, uh, that would also probably have an effect. But your, your, your voice bounces off of every single object in the room. And so what's going to happen is, yes, you're still going to get audio. It's not like, oh my gosh. It's not, that's not how it's going to work. It's not going to mute anything like that. What it's going to do is it's simply going to calm it down because this most sensitive part of this microphone, the way I have it set, is coming right off the tip of this thing. And now, let, me, let me hold this specifically so right now it's actually going to capture more of the audio from the printers as we're closer to the printers so you can hear the sound. There's also a fan going on over top of me right now as we're doing this too. But I have these two printers, they're both running here, and you can see even as I turn my head, you're losing audio because we're not directing our voice directly at the source of the microphone. But if I stop and just let you hear the, the printers for a second, it's 
it's going to pick those up really well. Now, so let's go ahead now and turn around and face the microphone away from the 3D printers. So the microphone is now bouncing back here. So any sound that the 3D printers make, yes, there is going to be dirt going into this microphone from those 3D printers. So yes, I'm assuming you can still hear it. But mainly that's because of the dirt. It's not directional. It could be bouncing off of a wall. It could be doing a whole bunch of other things right now. But the main goal here is that this is still going to be the best scenario for this microphone because it's at arm's reach. It's still going to be reading me specifically more than anything else. And it's going to be blocking out most of the sound, not completely, muting it slightly, of everything in the background. So the nice thing is if you're in a crowd, if you're in a, if you're doing a special event, if you're a vlogger, uh, this is a really great system to have handy. And I'm not saying this. I am saying a shotgun microphone. And they make shotgun microphones quite a bit smaller. Like this little guy right here, the, Vo the Rode Video Micro. It's actually a pretty decent microphone. And it's considered a shotgun microphone, though it is very, very small. Now, in saying this, and uh, saying since we're doing all these tests, let me show you what this microphone is not, okay? And uh, the, the, if, you're, if you're wanting clean, crisp sound, if you're in a room like this, you're not going to get clean, crisp sound. The only way... Clean, crisp? Clean, crisp sound. The only way you're going to get clean, crisp sound is literally by being in a whisper room, being in a room that's built to not have audio bouncing everywhere. People don't think of that when they're in rooms like this. I have guitars in here. Those have reverberating bodies. I have large windows. Those have rever reverberating glass. Uh, I have monitors all over the place that also have reverberating plastics. So there's really not a good way to, to block a lot of that except to like install a whole bunch of how do I put this? A whole bunch of, like, cloth everywhere. Uh, and, and I see so many YouTubers and people doing that, and they try to reinvent their room, and it makes sense. So I got this microphone set up over here now because what I want to do is I want to show you guys what this microphone is not, okay? And what this microphone is not is it's not a way to reach in a long distance. So I'm just going to start backing away here and continue talking here. And as I do, I might need to redirect my microphone's direction a little bit. There we go. But even as I'm backing up here, it's still going to start sounding, you know, echoey because it's receiving the echo from bouncing off the walls and everything like that. And it might be really quiet. So you're thinking, oh, it's quiet. Turn it up. Well, the more you turn it up, the more sensitive it becomes to sound everywhere else. And that's not what we're looking for here. We're not looking for it to become more sensitive to sound. What, what the goal needs to be and what I do, and let me show you what I do for my broadcasts now. What I do is I point this thing at my mouth, I point it at a direction just a little bit off the mouth, I'll turn it down to my usual level which is between three and four. My goal is to turn it down as low as humanly possible and then record not directionally. I talk off of it because I don't want the p -p 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 from my mouth getting on there and technically I don't want my spit on there. So I talk like this. I talk with it pointed at my mouth, but not completely. I'm talking past it, okay? And, the, and this is actually a good technique that you'll see a lot of singers and do in music. If they have a microphone that they talk into, usually they don't have it right here in front of their mouth. Usually they have it a little bit to the side, possibly a little bit down, because they don't want the, the, the breath from their nose hitting the microphone. They don't want the poofs or the plosives from the mouth coming out. That is all part of some of the things that they are trying to block. So anyway, this is just a quick video that I was wanting to show you. I got this microphone specifically because I've been in quarantine for the last three weeks. And yes, I know I have a half a million microphones here that I can absolutely utilize. My Perception 120s and 220s are absolutely fabulous. My Sure Super Cardioid microphone that you guys saw my video on a while back, I still love that microphone to death. I use that in a lot of my... Uh, a lot of my interviews with other people. I even have a headset that I borrowed from work that I've truly been enjoying and I've wondered about buying my own of those. Uh, I have plenty of microphone options. So why did I pick this one? Well, the H6 has the ability to become an input-output, basically a sound card for whatever computer you plug it into, which means that I can record directly into Audition using this microphone. And having the quality and the noise cancellation off the sides of this microphone in literally any room of my house with a small laptop, I can broadcast from anywhere. I have taken this into the basement sitting on my ma in, in my master bedroom, in my bed. Literally, I've made a full broadcast 
uh, from my bed. And I'm telling you, this is a broadcast that goes across uh, our city and, and all over the place. And it's an actual radio station that I work for. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, and it does absolutely, I can guarantee that it does work in the same way, shape, and form with the F1. Um, There's a a lot of, um, you can actually buy this F1 recorder with this microphone as a kit, Um, so you might want to consider doing that if that's the purpose you're doing it with. Um, And I just wanted to share it with you. This is a great microphone for so many purposes, not just for broadcasting. I'm a broadcaster. I think in broadcast terms, Um, so I'm used to that. But I know a lot of people who are utilizing this function, this system, or this on this, to go out and record sounds for sampling and for looping and and stuff like that, Uh, for sound effects, for Foley, um, and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of great options that you can use with this microphone. I have not found any flaws to it. It works incredibly well for me. I don't even have any kind of a um, a shock mount for it. I have it right here on my desk on these legs directly hooked to this. There is no shock mounting here, and technically I don't have any issues with any kind of shock mount uh, issue as well. So it's a really great microphone. I think it's like $150, $170 for this microphone, Um, but it was worth the purchase in my opinion. And will I put it on a a camera? Probably not. But will I use it for fully? Yes. Will I use it for sampling? Absolutely. Uh, Will I use it for broadcasting? Already do. Just saying. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. You know what to do. And, uh, you know, I deeply appreciate your comments. If I can answer any, any, any of your questions, I would appreciate uh, you leaving comments down below. And the reason why is because when you ask a question, that means I need to find the answer. And usually I can make another video. As long as I still have that tech, um, I can make another video to make that answer. That's more content for me. That's answers for you. Uh, And that's the way I like it to be. I like community. I love communication. Uh, So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time right here on Legacy Studio. God bless y'all. Try and behave yourselves, but if not, you know, make sure at least you get it on camera. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.